Hello and welcome to another session in English language. And today our focus is on elements of a sentence alongside spellings. But before that, let us review the previous lesson. Welcome back. So we begin today's lesson with structure and we are considering elements of sentences. Now, so we want to look at what do sentences contain? What elements make up a sentence? So a sentence, like we said, can be divided into what we call the subject and predicate. Okay? A typical sentence can be divided into what is called the subject and the predicate, right? But a typical sentence also is said to contain subject, verb, object, complement, and adjunct. A typical sentence contains subject, verb, object, complement and agent okay so let's look at so we are abbreviating subject with s verb with v object with o complement with c and adjunct with what a as you can see on your screen so let's look at a typical sentence the policeman bought a new pistol last week so let's analyze this sentence the policeman is the subject, but is the verb. A new pistol is the object, and last week is the adjunct of time. The girl was the girls were speechless. The girls, the subject, were the verb, and speechless is a complement. Okay, so the elements of a sentence we have what we call the subject. Like I said, the subject points to the person or what is being discussed in a sentence. The subject points to the person or what is being discussed in a sentence. So, how do you identify the subject in a sentence? Okay, we ask the question who and what is being discussed. So then we have the predicate, which is the second basic part of a typical sentence. Okay, so what is being said about the person is the predicate. Okay, what is being said about the person is the predicate. And the predicate includes verbs, which could be flexible verbs, auxiliary verbs. It could also be adverbs, it could be adjectives. Okay, so they make up what we call the predicate. Okay, then we have examples here we also have what we call the direct and indirect objects the direct and indirect objects okay so direct objects we have children play games indirect objects she bought me lovely shoes now me is the indirect object okay so, lovely shoes is the direct object. Sarah gave her cat a bath. Her cat is the indirect object. So, we always say that the indirect object comes before the direct object. The indirect object comes before the direct object. Okay, so it's very important to take note of that then we also have what we call subject complement okay there are two types of complements we have subject complement and object complement okay the subject complement tells us about the subject while the object complement tells us about the objects in a sentence then we have what we call the adjunct or the adverbial which most times is an adverb okay it tells us more about the adverbial phrase or the noun phrase or a prepositional phrase 
So we can see the examples listed here. So these are seven basic simple sentence patterns. The girl laughed. Analyze the girl. Subject laughed. Verb. That's one sentence pattern. Children play games. Children. Subject. Play. Verb. What do they play? Games. Object. Tope is a lawyer. Tope. Subject. Is. Verb. A lawyer. Compliment. Which is what? Subject compliment here. I. Subject. Gave. Verb. If. A, indirect object. Book. Direct object. So that's why you have the SVOO. She considered him a fool. She. Subject. Considered. Verb. Him. A fool. Is the object. Okay. Then we have. She. Subject. Is. A verb in the toilet, an adjunct of place. Then I, subject, placed, verb, object, the cup, on the table, adjunct, or what you call adverbial. So, we have analyzed the seven basic sentence Patterns SV, SVO, SVC, SVOO, SVO, SVA, and SVOA. So these are the seven basic simple sentence patterns. Okay, so let's move on to the last segment, and uh, which is on spellings. When do we drop the E in certain words, and when do we retain the E in certain words? We drop the E. When the word is an adjective and it ends in L-E. When the word is an adjective and it ends in L-E, we drop the E when we are adding a suffix to it. So we have able becoming ably, agreeable becoming agreeably, humble become humbly okay so you can see that the e was dropped in the word humble when adding an ly then fulfill okay and skillful have a single l in the middle but when you double them when you want to add to them okay so you have fulfilled and skillfully so in words ending in a silent e you drop the e beginning with a vowel we gave an example like the word continue okay continue the e there is what is silent it's a silent e so what do you do you drop that Okay, when you are adding other suffixes to it. In the word leave, okay, it is silent, you drop that. In the word shine, it is silent, you drop that. Okay, so that is why they are dropped in every of the words continue, leave, shine. Even write also. Okay. Very important to take note of that. But when you are, you retain the E only when you are making the past tense. Like lived, like moved, like loved. Okay? Now, the final E can be dropped in the following words. Now, when you are converting words from a particular word class to another, you can drop the final E. For instance, acknowledge. 
it's a verb here. When you want to change the word class to a noun, acknowledgement, you drop the E. We have argue, a verb. Argument, we drop the E. Judge, a verb. Judgment, it changes the word class. Lodge, lodgement. So, we can see where we are dropping the E in the course of our spellings. Okay? Then we can also have when this E is retained. Okay, where do we retain the E in our course of spelling? In words like notice. Okay? So, when we have S and G, okay? We most times retain the E, like notice. Okay? When you want to form another word, noticeable, you notice we retain the E. Service, serviceable, trace, traceable, we retain the E. Change, changeable, we retain the E. Also in the word age, we retain the E, aging, syringe, syringe. All right, keno, kenoe, shoe, shoe. Then also in words like nice, nicely, vague, and also vaguely. So these are situations where we retain the E in the course of the spelling. So with this, we've come to the end of. The lesson today thank you very much for joining in order to refresh your memory and recall all that has been taught during the course of the lesson i would encourage you take the test that pops up on your screen